Hey guys, Keith here. I wanted to run you through a feature coming in Xlight's 2023.15, which involves or attempts to solve the problem that many people have experienced where they have both, say, a Halloween show and a Christmas show, and they have a bunch of elements which are common in both of those shows, but then a set of elements that are distinct in each one, and they want to be able to uh, manage that uh, the common elements in a way that's efficient so they don't have to keep on going in and making uh, double edits uh, to those elements in order to make them work. Now it's kind of difficult to solve because you know at the end of the day you know you've got controllers which are shared between both of those installations but I've come up with a way to do it and uh, look to be honest it's a version 1.0 I'm sure there's going to be some challenges but I wanted to walk through it introduce it uh, if you're planning to use it in 2023 you know it, it's probably a little bit on the risky side just because it's it's not particularly mature and, and there's some risk associated with it but maybe not it, it's not that bad it's just you know I, I always hesitate with these things so what I've done is is I've got a folder here and it's got three show folders a base show folder a Christmas and a Halloween folder the Christmas and the Halloween folders are empty this one isn't it's it's got uh, this base folder and, and the idea here is in the base folder I'm going to set up some elements which are going to be common to both my Halloween and my uh, Christmas uh, show and look I, I'm not going to do anything too elaborate here right I, I might have some single line models maybe a, a polyline model and I don't know maybe maybe I'll have a mega tree that that's common all right and I'm going to have some controllers so I'm going to add in an ethernet controller choose a falcon controller v5 192.168.1.50 that'll do I'll visualize it and I'm going to throw these models onto it it's a hell of it that tree I don't want it to use that many ports so I'll go in and quickly edit this thing so that there are let's say 200 pixels four strings and four strands per string uh, what did I do wrong there four strands per string and oops, if you type in 200 all right so now that's only using up the four ports which all looks really good so I'm going to save that and that's going to be my base show folder and now I want to build my Christmas show or maybe my Halloween show so the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go and change to that folder so let me choose my Christmas folder or oh, actually let me choose my Halloween folder to start with and obviously this folder is blank it's got nothing in it at all now the first thing that we need to do to turn this on is to come up to the preferences and turn on this enable base show folder setting so unless you turn this on you won't have any of this functionality available when you do turn it on you now get under here this base show directory and by default there's none set so i'm going to change this and i'm going to set that to be my base show folder like so and by default it's not auto update so when it's auto update that means every time you load up this halloween show folder it's going to go and look into the base and it's going to bring from the base everything into the halloween show folder that is in the base so if you change something in the base the next time you open halloween it will be updated with the settings from the base now it will only bring across those models and controllers which either don't exist in the Halloween folder but do exist in the base or things that do exist in the base that do exist in Halloween that originally came from the base if I go and create something in this Halloween that already exists in the base then it won't override it from the base but you can change it later on to do that so for the moment it's still blank nothing's changed yet but if I click the update button here 
it's going to go out to that base folder and it's going to bring it in. And if there's anything that clashes, it's going to highlight it. Now, because the grid lines object is always created, it is going to clash. So we'll just say that we want to take the one from the base show folder. And at this point, we can save it. You can see that it's bought in our controller. Notice it's in blue. When you click on it, all the fields are disabled. That's because this comes from the base show folder and you can't change it. Now you can add models to it. You just can't change any of the properties. You have to go back, open up the base show folder to change any of the settings up here that you might want to change. The same is true in the layout. The models are here and you can click on them just like you could at any other time but all the properties here are locked off uh, you'll notice that the the border marks here are in like a purple color uh, indicating that these things come from the base and if you come up it tells you down here that this came from the base show folder which means it's not editable but what i can do is i can bring in let's say a bat model right so we'll search here for bat Come on, find me a bat, that'll do. We'll insert that bat. So now I've got a bat model. This is obviously in my Halloween folder. I can come back to the controllers tab, click visualize. I can grab that bat and drop it down somewhere and it's all good. Now it will also bring across groups, although be warned that when it, you create a group, the models which were defined in the group in the base folder will always stay before the models which you've added to that group once you've got it in your Halloween folder or your Christmas folder. So there's a few things like that, that you've got to be aware of because of the merging that needs to go on. But this Halloween folder here is fine. And all of these things obviously have come from the, the base show folder. Now you can unlink them from the base show folder. If you right click on the model, you can select the unlink from base show folder. That will leave the model here. It's just it won't be linked to the base show folder anymore. So if you change it in the base show folder, it won't update in this folder if you ever wanted to do that. Uh, but you don't need to. So we're going to click this to auto update on load. If you take a look at this, remember the trees here in the bottom right hand corner. Let's go back to the base folder. Just so that you can see how this works. We'll go into our base. We'll go to the layout here. Where's that tree gone? Oh, there it is. We'll go to our tree. Let's drag and drop it over onto the left hand side here. We'll click save. Now we'll go back into that derive folder. Uh, sorry, not the derive folder. We'll go into the Halloween folder. And if we go into the layout here, you'll notice that the tree has, has correctly moved across to the left because we updated in that base. And so it's, it's changed it and loaded it from there. Uh, when you when you loaded it. Now I can also now go back and change, whoops, not that one, change this one and we'll go up into our Christmas folder, select that. Okay, it should have cleared that, it's a bit of a bug, we'll fix that, that's okay. But it has actually brought everything in and so now we can go and download, let's say, a snowflake model. Snowflake here. Looks good. I'll click save on that. And so again, I can come into here, click visualize and put that snowflake in here and maintain these things separately, but always know that it's going to be updated uh, from the base folder if the base folder changes. Right, so 
that's the concept. You, you have a base folder, you have where you put all your common elements, and then you have your Halloween and your Christmas folder, and you set up these base show folders in order to link the two together so that when you change anything in the base folder, it always then updates in or can be manually update into your um, folder. Now, when you click the update folder, if you've gone in here and I don't know, let's say we've disconnected this tree, when you do, when you just open the show folder, it, it will just skip over that tree and it won't load it. But if you click the update button here, it will detect to, that the tree is unlinked and that it exists in the show folder. And if you want to relink it, you can just click the yes button here or you can click no and it will leave it unlinked. So that's how you can restore it. Um, and the grid lines have also been disconnected because we hadn't connected those before. So yeah, so, so if you do unlink things and you want to relink them up without deleting them, because when you delete them, it does things like removes them out of groups and you obviously don't want that to happen, you can click the update button here and it will prompt you to relink the models back to the base folder if that's what you need to do. But obviously if you want to unlink the thing, because once when it's linked, you can't move it or do anything with it. It's like a locked model, but all the properties are locked. When you unlink it, of course you can you know, once a model's unlinked, you can move it around and you can set its properties, etc. But then if you unlink it again, it is going to bring it in and put it back. So we've put it on the right hand side here. If I click update and I say, yeah, I do want to relink the tree model and I go back to my layout, it's replaced it and put it right back where it was. So any of the properties that I might have changed when I pushed it out over here onto the right have all been lost because it's brought all those model properties in from the base folder. So look, conceptually, I hope this is going to make for those people that do run multiple show folders with common elements, make their life a lot easier when it comes to maintaining those base elements. But all right, guys, have fun with it. Cheers. <laughs>